AI is everywhere. There's no escaping it. So you might as well figure out a way to use it to your advantage. And while I do believe that programming jobs will decrease over the next five to 10 years, there's a lot that AI can do for you today in large scale and personal projects. I also promised y'all I'd make a video about AI tools for software engineers a few videos ago, and I'm a man of my word. I've been using and researching these tools to learn what they can really do. And you may have heard of a few of them, but I'm gonna be talking about the what they do as well as some use cases in your software engineering workflow. Now keep in mind, we're talking about AI tools to help in your coding and development workflow overall, not AI that you can implement in an app or, or, or serve as a product or anything like that. Just, just wanted to make that clear off the rip. Let's get started. First and foremost, ChatGPT. You're probably tired of hearing it at this point, but it's first on this otherwise unordered list for a reason, because you can stop bothering your senior devs and just ask ChatGPT whatever question you need. You thought I was going to tell you about the generative AI aspects or the refactoring of your code or testing, uh, writing unit tests and things of that nature. No, I kind of said it as bait because <laughs> that's really the main way you ought to use ChatGPT now as a software engineer because everything else is kind of, uh, well, let's just say the days of copy and pasting are over. Instead of using ChatGPT for generative AI, for code generation, I should say, GitHub Copilot. Not just GitHub Copilot as you knew it a couple months ago or a year ago or whenever it was released, but GitHub Copilot X which was just released in March of 2023. Just take ChatGPT, put it in your IDE, and that is basically GitHub Copilot X. It has full code generation, so you type in what you want, it outputs the code, and you can test and use it from there. But not only that, you can also refactor the code, write unit tests for your code, debug your code, and really do anything that you need to do. All of this plugged right in to your IDE of choice, but it can do way more than that. It's actually quite amazing what GitHub Copilot X can actually do. In case you forgot how to do something, you can just ask Copilot and it'll search documentation and whatnot to create your own little written tutorial on how to do that thing. Voice coding is introduced. Hey GitHub, toggle code mode, import pandas, import graph plotting library. Hey GitHub, insert new line. Get Titanic CSV data from the web. Clean records from Titanic data where age is null. Now you can just talk and have Copilot code for you. So cool, I guess. It'll automate pull request messages for you based on what your code actually does so you don't have to sit there stressing about how to describe it because we all know you don't actually know what the code does. And probably my favorite thing other than the obvious coding portion of it, the CLI. Instead of trying to remember a command or do some sort of complex task in the command line, just like how it generates or autocompletes code, it'll take your plain English command, translate it, and perform it. No more cheat sheets, no more looking up every little or complex command, nope, just copilot for CLI. Well, that is whenever it becomes available, but the premise, is it's worth talking about. Now there are other generative or autocomplete AI tools like Code T5, Tab9, Polycoder, which is the open source response to Copilot, now actually built on their GPT Neo X after leaving GPT2 since GPT3 and 4 are now closed source. But Neo X is still not as good as GPT4. And there are a couple more, but none of them hold a candle to Copilot right now. As a software engineer, that's a tool you shouldn't go without. And also as a software engineer, you know how important it is to have reliable communication channels within your applications. That's where the sponsor of this portion of today's video comes in, Mailgun. Mailgun is an efficient, powerful, and easy to integrate email service provider specifically designed to meet the needs of developers and businesses. Mailgun controls the entire email lifecycle from pre-development through delivery of over 240 billion emails a year for companies like DHL, Wikipedia, Toast, Lyft, and Microsoft. With their user-friendly API, you too can easily integrate Mailgun into your applications regardless of the programming language you're using. Here's what Mailgun can do for you. Effortlessly send and track transactional and marketing messages, improve email deliverability, and drive higher conversion rates with the help of email experts. Prevent fake signups and quickly remove invalid email addresses from your list to maintain a clean and healthy database. And harness Mailgun's send time optimization feature, which is probably my favorite, which automatically finds the ID 
ideal send time for each individual on your list, ensuring the highest possible engagement. I kinda wish I could do this for my YouTube videos. But the best part, Mailgun is offering 30 days completely free to help you get started so you can try out their services without any commitment. Once you've experienced the ease of integration and powerful features Mailgun offers, scaling your application's email needs will be a breeze. So if you're a software engineer looking for an efficient and reliable email solution, try Mailgun today by using my link, mailgun.com slash farsenight, or just click the link in the top of the description. Now moving on to some AI tools that'll help your workflow as opposed to just coding. Microsoft 365 Copilot, or Google Workspace AI, depending upon which suite of tools you use, will come in handy. In Outlook or Gmail, you'll be able to get summaries of email threads, main points from emails, or generate your own email, but also generate the email using data from Excel, which is one of my favorite use cases here inside of this suite, Excel, or Sheets. Use the AI to analyze your numbers, identify trends, create graphs and charts, and so much more. Speaking of Microsoft particularly, as I'm not sure that Google Workspace can do this, some of these things will be adopted by each other. If Google does one thing, Microsoft is bound to adopt it, and Microsoft the same for Google, because, I mean, they're the same exact tools. They're the same exact suite of tools. They're gonna to see what works over here and take it for themselves, obviously. But let's say you're in a client meeting. The AI can take notes in the meeting, and with those notes, take Microsoft OneNote or Word to create an entire proposal or roadmap or whatever you want to generate using these notes, and from there, have it create a PowerPoint presentation, or just if you whipped up some sort of Word document or anything, or just want to do typical text to PowerPoint presentation, you can do that. I know many of y'all work in teams or freelance and work with your own clients, or maybe your students, and you use these suite of tools, let's just say I don't see any way where this AI can't help your workflow. And now while this one is a little bit more niche, the tools, not niche in general, but niche for software engineers, it very well may come in handy and probably will, particularly for maybe those solo freelancers, definitely the hobbyists or anyone who creates content or marketing or anything like that, that is baked into your software engineering role, Image Generative AI. That would be OpenAI's Dolly 2, or what I've found to be a better one, Midjourney for AI art. You're able to be very specific in what you need, the type of art you're looking for, like it's whether it's realistic or 2D or what have you, you can make variations and adjustments, and overall, I've found it to be useful. However, there's a new tool that I've yet to use but seems to blow these out the water in actual usability and customization and basically everywhere else, and that is Adobe Firefly. It's also generative AI, but with much more control. You're essentially creating the building blocks to where you can then adjust the image layers yourself or ask it for specific details to change the same way you generate, uh, generate it, so you text to generative AI, text to image is what it is, and then you can text to specify the image, if that makes sense. It can create custom fonts, implement text-based video editing, 3D compositions, create unique posters, banners, social posts, and more. All of this with a simple text prompt. Adobe really came into this game and just flipped it on its head. It's really that much better. But again, a bit more involved, so just depends on your use case. One more thing that I have to mention, if all else fails you, all of these tools we're talking about here fails you, and you have to go Google something, well, just take Google and put it in the trash and pick up Bing and Microsoft Edge, because this has ChatGPT, just like GitHub Copilot X, baked right in, but obviously specific for this use case. And when I say ChatGPT, I do mean GPT-4, but I also do kind of mean ChatGPT because of how it works. But also it's so much better because instead of going back and forth of copying and pasting ChatGPT, what did I say earlier in this video? The days of copy and pasting are over. You can do it all right in the Edge browser. Or if you're looking for an answer to something, Bing will not only search the web, it'll also provide the answer itself or all of the information compiled together and linked to its source. Just depends on how complex your request is. And as software engineers, we all know, particularly before ChatGPT came about, that the search engine was our best friend. And for many, for whatever reason, still is. Just when you're doing it, 
make sure that you are using the search engine to the best of its abilities. And the one with the best abilities happens to be Bing. I did have a few more tools on this list, but how everything's evolved over the past month or so that we saw in you know my last video, I feel like a lot of it would be redundant, especially considering the fact like most of it can be done in these tools that I mentioned. Like when you need to generate text that can be done in the Word documents or docs, Google Docs, or it can be done in ChatGPT. It can even be done in Copilot X or it can be done in Notion AI, which is something I haven't mentioned, but I've been playing around with a little bit, just a little bit. I don't know enough about it just yet, but maybe soon. Like the alternatives to that would be like Canva's Magic Write or Jasper AI, or I know there are a few other ones that I've actually used, but I never found to be better, not even as good as ChatGPT, even when it had GPT-3. So yeah, all of those are a little bit more niche anyway, because they're kind of more for, for like the solo devs or maybe the hobbyists or people who are, you know, you wanna generate text or things for a website you're building. It just all depends on your use case for how and when you can use these tools. And I didn't mention Google Bard for a reason. Well, it's because <laughs> It's just not there yet. Despite all of the resources over the past many years that Google has just thrown at it, it's not there yet. And, and in all honesty, I think the reasoning for that is because Google's throttling it. Did I discuss last video why I think they're throttling it? Eh, maybe I'll make a full video on that, who knows. Foreshadowing. But as the software engineer you are, in any regard, team, freelance, hobbyist, these tools, no doubt, can help your coding, your client relations and your team workflow in a much more seamless manner so you can focus on working on the things you truly want to do. Because we all know that there's a lot of time wasted in emails and meetings and everything related and in between. So if we can use AI to kind of just mitigate the amount of time that we spend on those tasks, well, we can just spend more time problem solving and writing code and doing all that good stuff or generating code and then editing it from there. You get what I'm saying. I hope you found some value here. If I miss an AI tool that you use on a regular basis that you really enjoy and think that I should know about or that everybody else watching should know about, leave it in a comment. Like and subscribe and uh, until next time, you have a good one.